Hello there, this is Yanis with episode number 12 of the Arcweave Basic Tutorial Series. In the previous episode, we introduced branches in our project, inserting the first sparks of logic with if and else statements. We'll play a little more with branches in this episode and see a few variants of what they can do. Just a reminder, you can find the link to the finished tutorial project in the description of this video and every video of the basic tutorial series. We have the option to unlock the drawer, if we have the key, but what if we don't? How about an alternative? Let's add the option to use brute force. Let's add another element here. And there are two ways to play this. The first way to go about this is to connect the element about using brute force to the branch. This means if we carry the key, we only get to unlock the drawer. If we don't carry the key, we only get the option to try and force the drawer open. So let's do this. Let's add an else statement and connect it to the brutally nothing element. Now we can add a label use brute force. And of course I have to get rid of this and go here with unlock. So let's run this. If we go to the kitchen without the key we can search the cabinets and we can only use brute force. And I forgot to connect this to the kitchen. Okay, here we are. And back to the kitchen. Now if we go and find the key, and search the cabinets, we can only unlock the drawer. We don't have the option to use brute force. And that's one way to go about it. The other way would be to always have the option to use brute force and have the unlocking option available only if the player has the key. To do this we need to connect the brute force element straight from searching the cabinets and get rid of the else statement. Now if we run this again we go to the kitchen search the cabinets, we can use brute force, nothing, go back to, go to the living room, go to the bathroom, examine, examine, get the key, go to the living room, oh, I'm dizzy, <laughs> go to the kitchen, search the cabinets, and now we have both options, okay? Unlock the drawer, or use brute force. Again, logic is the key. Think of what you want the player to be able to do and place your branches accordingly. Of course we now have the same problem. We need a variable to store the information of having found the ring. Otherwise the player will keep unlocking the drawer and finding the ring again and again. Well, this is how computers work. Let's go to global variables and create a new one. Let's actually do this a little differently this time. Uh, create new variable and call it ring state and make this an integer. And initial value, yes, we want zero. Why is that? Well, I thought that this ring can have several states. So, for zero, for the value of zero, it means that the ring has not been found yet. For the value of one, it means that the player has taken the ring and for the value of 2, it means that they have given it to somebody. Let's keep this note here for future reference. 
Okay, so the first thing we need to do is change the ring value to 1 when the player finds the ring. Let's give this a little space. We've already seen how we do this. We go here and add a line of arc script. We can either um, click on this icon here or we can use a nice little shortcut, Control, Shift and C, or for Apple, Command, Shift and C. And now we can type ring state becomes one. So when we get the ring, the ring state becomes one because we have decided that one means we've taken the ring. Now, if the player carries the key, they can unlock the drawer. But if they carry the ring, we actually don't want to bother the player with the option of searching the drawer again. This means we put a condition before the search option here. If ring state equals zero, yes, go ahead and search because we don't have the ring. Otherwise, don't give me the option to search at all. But we can also do something different and see um, how else if statements work. Let's say we always allow the player the option to search the cabinets. But we give a different response according to what the state of the ring is. So if the player already has the ring, so, uh, yes, we still need a branch here. If ring state equals zero. So search the cabinets. Now check if ring state equals zero. Sorry, just give me a second. There you go. If ring state equals zero, we go here. Else if, and here's our our else if ring state equals one, what did I just type? If ring state equals one, it means we have the ring already. So here's another response that says okay. And we need to be able to go back to the kitchen. So let's give another, let's create another um, jumper here. Okay, and else, which covers the ring state equals two, which is the last uh, option, the last possibility. It means we've given the ring to somebody. Great. All right. And we go back. Let's practice a little bit of color coding and make those two red because they actually block the searching action and they don't really push the plot forward. And let's have a look at this again, this logic. So we go to the kitchen and we always see, of course, the option to go back to the living room and we always see the option to search the cabinets. Why do we always see this option? Because this branch covers all possible outcomes, zero, one or two. Now, if we don't have the ring, we can go ahead and search the cabinets. If we have the key, we can unlock the drawer, etc., etc. If we have the ring with us, we get, when we try to search the cabinets, we get the response, hey, you are already carrying the ring. Do you remember that or not? Go back. Uh, otherwise, if we've given the ring away, which we haven't really set yet, but let's say we can give the ring to somebody and then this will, tear, uh, this will turn the ring state into uh, the value of 2. Let's say we can give the ring to somebody and this will give the ring state 
variable, the value of 2. And if we try to search the cabinets with ring state being 2, uh, we get this response. You've given the ring away, remember, and go back to the kitchen. Great. Now, to try this, let's add another scene in the story where we will be able to give the ring. If we carry the ring and go to the living room, we'll find Horace Linetti there and he'll take the ring from us. So, uh, let's create a new element. And the element also requires a value change. So ring state becomes two. And we can add Horace's picture as a cover. Now, to trigger this scene, we need another branch that will check if the ring state is 1 when we are in the living room. Since the player can only find the ring in the kitchen, we only need to check the ring's state on the way back from the kitchen to the living room. So, let's add a branch. And every time we go from the kitchen to the living room, we make a check. If ring state equals 1, if we have the ring, then instead of going to the living room, we need to go to the scene. And when the scene is over, we go back to the living room. Else, if we don't have the ring, we go straight to the living room. This looks a bit funny, but this is how it works. And let's run this. Let's run it from the beginning. So, we've seen what happens in the kitchen, but let's give it a go. We can use brute force, accomplish nothing, go back, go to the living room, go to the bathroom. Okay, Horace is not here. Now go to the bathroom. Examine the mirrors, examine the corner, above the door, find the key, back. Actually, let's turn on the debug. Now we see that we have found the key, and it's true, the boolean is true. The ring state is zero. We haven't found the ring, of course. So, examine the mirrors, we see nothing. Nothing else. Go back. Go to the living room. Uh, go to the kitchen. Search the cabinets. Now we have the key, so we get the option to unlock the drawer. And we find the ring. Now, ring state equals uh, 1. Great. Go back. Now, let's go to the living room, but because ring state equals 1, we expect the man himself. There we go. Now, he takes the ring from us, and ring state becomes 2. Oh, by the way, Mm, I forgot to check for the response that we already have the ring, but let's go and check for the response that we've given the ring away. Search the cabinets. You've given the ring away, remember? And back. So that was it for this episode. We actually had two episodes on branches, but for a good reason. Logic and conditionals are, after all, the meat and potatoes of any interactive story. In the next episode, we will enjoy more of the simplicity of ArcScript when we learn how to manipulate our text responses with logic without using branches. If you're finding these tutorials helpful, please consider subscribing to Arcweave's official YouTube channel. You can also follow Arcweave on Twitter and Facebook. Let the games begin. Thanks for watching, and we'll speak very, very soon. Mm -hmm.